Father, I thank you. I give the praise. I give the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind all demonic powers, witchcraft. Lord, I bind any power from the earth, powers from the ocean, from the water, rivers. I bind all powers from the heavens or from elements, the sun and the moon. I arrest them that they shall not strike anybody that hears this message. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, I want to look at fighting for a destiny. Fighting for you? Now, why am I looking at fighting for a destiny? Because the reason why these strongholds or altars are mounted into the heavenly bodies is to fight your destiny. Is to fight your? Is to fight your destiny. This whole drama is to fight your? And because your destiny is very important, that's why there is such a big war. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, if you're fighting for your destiny, or if your destiny is involved, what we see is that the Lord Jesus, the Bible calls him the man of war. The man of? The man of? You need to know that you on your side, if God is for us, who can be against us? You have the man of war. You have the God who is called the man of? On your side. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Bible says, And the Lord is the man of war. And the Lord is the man of? The Lord is his name. The Lord is a man of? Is a man of God. Is a man of war. So let God arise. In short, let God arise and his enemies be scattered in your life. According to Psalm 68 verse 1. And I decree it in your life in the name of Jesus. That God shall fight for you in the name of Jesus. I say thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand side. Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. So God is the fourth man in your battle. What it means is the Lord, the Lord. What it means to say the Lord is the man of war. What it means is that the Lord is the righteous warrior. The Lord is what? He is also a mighty and terrible warrior. Not terrible as bad, terrible. It's, the Bible says, fierce, it's, it's, it's fearsome. Like you have to be afraid to fall in the hands of God. It's fearful to fall in the hands of he is a victorious and a prevailing warrior. God is what? Jesus is a victorious and prevailing. He always prevails. In other words, he understands the strategies of the enemy, the in and out, the policies of the enemy, his skill, his skills. And God is a skillful and expert, you know, warrior. And he will destroy the enemy that is coming up against you. So our God is a great and uncomparable warrior. Job chapter 9 verse 4 says, He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and has prospered. In other words, if God fights someone, if God fights, they can never prevail. It means when God fights for you and he fights, what it means is that I don't care how much money the person has, that money cannot save them. They can bribe the courts, but not when God is fighting for you. <laughs> Even if the judge will say, no, 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 this one is different. Even when they go to a wizard and witch, they'll say, hey, the wizard will say, says, okay, what did you come to... Uh, he says, please rise up now. I don't want your money. Now go. You want, me to, you want to get me killed? <laughs> they will refuse the money. He says, ah, but Baba, you always, you always help me. He says, no, 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 no. no. I, I don't want to see you again. You hear me? Why? Because they are afraid when God appears on the scene. So in short, when God summons, when God or beckons this, you know, or gives a sermon. All things starts fighting on his behalf. They will perform his action 
and they fight his battles. Levers will start rising up. Small streams will start sweeping people up. Trees, the earth, everything starts fighting him because they obey his command. This is the man of war. Hmm? God is a man of, it's the Bible who says that. He's a man of God. I, I mean a man of war, sorry. Our God has all authority. What it means, he has all authority and power and influence. And Jesus Christ, what happened is that uh, he will never be overcome. Nobody can be overcome. Nobody can overcome Jesus. No one has ever prospered against him. You know, he knows the enemy and his strategies, power in and out. So none can ex escape or discern his arrows when he shoots. Are we together? No one can bribe him. No one can use money or anything. And Ephesians 2, 6 shows us that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So that's the reason why he will fight for you. So all the strongholds that are mounted up in the heavenlies that the Bible says, the Bible says we need to pull them down. Why? You can't pull something down if it's in there. It's not in there. It's up. That's what the Bible says. Our weapons of are not kind of a might through God to the pulling down of stronghold. So, but I want to just dwell around and try to show you what is destiny. What is? Because many people's destinies have been either aborted or destroyed by demons that operate from the heavenlies. Now, if you don't understand what is destiny, let me make you understand just a little bit. Are we together? What is destiny? Destiny is desire, you know, uh, in other words, a desire of God or God's purpose for your life. A destiny is what? Let's, let's put it just short. It's God's purpose for your life. One. Number two, it is your appointed or ordained future. It is your or ordained. If God ordained that you should have a big business, you should have mansions. That's God appointed. But then these powers will start fighting. And most of you, you are supposed to be rich, but you are poor. Because these forces are fighting you. Are we together? I already said that most of you, money is a problem because you are supposed to have money. So they fight you. Not blindly. They know that if you have money, you're going to bless many people. You're going to sponsor TV programs. You're going to do things so they are hindering you so that you don't get the money. Number three, it is what God has predetermined. Has what? You to be or become into his divine will. It is what God has predetermined you to become or to be into his divine will. Number four, destiny. It is the ex expectation or expecting, or let's say expectation, heaven has upon your life. It is what? It has upon your life. It is what is written, number five, it is what is written in the heavenly records about you. Number six, it is what God had in mind when he created you. That's why Jesus said, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in. He said, pray like this, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is recorded in heaven, let it be done on earth. And that's why before he died, the Bible says, he says, Lord, let not my will, but your will. So what it meant is that a dying man, a dying, will write a will before he dies. So the will that he wrote with the father before he died on the earth, that's what he says, let not my will, but your will. Meaning the, your will about these people that we wrote, that I'm signing with my blood. That now, he was made poor so that he, I may become rich. I was healed by his stripes. So all the benefits of his death all those promises are part of the will that he signed before he died. That's why he says, let your will be done, not my will. A testament. A will is also called what? 
That's why it's called the New Testament. It's a testament. It's a will that he wrote for us. That's why he said, now when you pray, pray that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is written in heaven, let it happen. If you meant me to have cars, let me have cars. That's why we encourage you to pray in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost is a Google or Google engine of heaven. So what, when you're praying in tongues, what happens is that the Holy Ghost starts taking the mysteries that are written in heaven about you which are in the will which is written and they st- the Holy Ghost starts imparting it on your tongue. And as you are declaring through the tongue, it starts coming to pass. If you want to be rich, pray in tongues. So you start praying exactly according to the will in heaven. Because whatever you shall decree, shall what? Shall come to pass. Are we together? Now, looking at this, the enemy will try to fight you. So your prayer should be, your prayer should be, I refuse to be replaced. I refuse to be or cut off. Therefore, I shall not lose my destiny in the name of Jesus. You have to understand that King Saul lost his what? Destiny. King Saul was was repressed. King Saul was behind every King Saul there is a David. If you fail the the assignment, David will take over. There are a lot of men of God and women of God that have failed the assignment of heaven and God has replaced them with others. They refuse to be replaced. The enemy will do anything. They made Saul do so many mistakes so that he should be replaced. Refuse to be? Be. I refuse, pray like this, I refuse to be replaced in the name of Jesus. And I see if, in other words, what happens is that you need to pray that the enemy should not divert you. Should not what? In other words, refuse any attack of the enemy that will try to frustrate your destiny. That what? Or frustrate what wants to frustrate your destiny. You have to deny anything outside the will of the Lord. You have to ask the Lord to frustrate it. Are we together? So the questions, we have a list of questions here. I hope I'll have a bit of just a few minutes. The questions to ask yourself are, number one, am I busy but not effective in life? Am I? And not what? Number two, am I a workaholic who is achieving nothing? Am I what? There are certain people, they work, oh my God. Eh? I was walking in town and I saw very handsome young boys, or uh, guys, not boys, they were singing like 12 or so. They were singing and I say, if they use that time and they had the plate in front, smartly dressed and for people to drop some. But I say, if they use that time to come up with scientific ideas, how much successful they would become in a month. You see, you can be a workaholic like that. The whole day standing on the sun singing and if you achieve 100 rand or change of 10 rand. So uh, am I a workaholic who is achieving nothing? Where you just do things just to keep yourself busy, but you don't achieve anything. Number three, have I become a spiritual jack of all trades, but a master of none? Number four, is my life an experiment? Or are you achieving your destiny? Some people, anything they see, if somebody is doing a business, even when I started this TV thing, eh, some people, even if God never taught them, they also try it. You see, they have no purpose. They don't know. They can't hear God. They will try it too. Jack of tra- all trades, but in, master of none. Or they will just experiment anything they can as long as it brings money. And this is a problem in our community. People are killing one another for taxi routes. Why? Because some of them are not meant to run taxis. 
So because he scrambled for resources now, let's kill each other. No. You got a purpose. You were not born to exist. That's what the Bible says. Find out what is the will of God. The moment you find out what is the will of God, provision is attached to that. Hmm? That's why when immediately I discovered this thing, God brought it. Already the provision has started. Are we together? Now, another question. Am I only five? Five. Am I using my money to bless those whom God has cursed? You have to ask yourself. Because some people are using their money blessing those that God has cursed. <laughs> if you bless that, the person that God has cursed, you need to know the fatal ground. Eh? This program is a fatal ground. That's why myself, one time I gave 15000 Why? I know it's a fatal ground. Me, I did it. I said, I don't want to be left behind. Are we together? Fatal ground. Don't bless those that God has cursed. You also attract a curse. Are we together? You can't. God will be fighting you because now you are trying to undo what God is. Some of you are helping people that God has put in a cocoon. You know a cocoon? Cocoon is a level where of development, right? The Bible said, John did not appear to the public until he had grown strong in the spirit and stature. So he was in the wilderness to grow strong. But now you go and say, let's come out of the wilderness. I've got a room. Oh, you got a room. God will say, but who told you to open the cocoon because I'm developing this person? You have to be sensitive. Are we together? I'm not saying don't help, but be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. You may bless somebody that God is cursing. And you get the case too. Are we together? Look for fertile grounds like this. All right. Let me be quick because of time. Am I using my life to sit for wrong exams? Hmm? You're sitting for wrong exams, doing wrong things. Are we together? Number seven. Am I winning a race that nobody asks me to run? Rejoicing. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Says that. But God never asked to run it. A lot of people are running races that God never asked them. And he says, oh, you look like a fool because you are saying, I'm a winner. And everyone says, ah, which race you are running? If you run the right race, everyone will rejoice because you bring joy to their lives. Are we together? That's the difference. I can be on the radio, but in my message will touch someone. Why? Because I'm running the race that God told me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Find what is the right thing. Not because somebody is selling maguinas. You also have to sell maguinan. Huh? You end up going to get squared. You know, mashonisa. Is it mashonisa? Hey. <laughs> Are we together? <laughs> Number eight. Hmm? <laughs> Amen. Number eight. Some of us entered in debt because we are doing the wrong thing. Number eight, have I allowed the enemy to convert me into a big fish in a small river? Hmm? Are you getting what I'm saying? You can't fit a square peg in the round hole. You can be doing totally something wrong. Nine, am I very effective doing the wrong things? Am I being Am I very effective doing the wrong things? You can be very effective but doing the wrong thing. Do you know that a lot of people, they get old only to discover they put the ladder on the wrong building. Only when they're on top of the building. It's important to find out what is the will of God. Hmm? I see people running here. Run. Some of you, if you are supposed to be here and you are in the wrong place, you will not be blessed. God will be waiting for you here because that's why he has prepared the message that will take you out. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. All right. Number 10. What does my spiritual thermometer read? What does my spiritual thermometer? Is it gossip 100 degrees Celsius? Lying 120? Steering 35%? Witnessing for Christ 5%? Love 0%. <laughs> You must check your spiritual thermometer. Are we together? 
Are we together? Eleven. Am I doing good things that are not right? Do you know that a wise idea or a good idea cannot be a wise idea? A good idea cannot be? Oh, you can be doing something good and yet it's not the right thing. You understand? Right thing and good thing, they are two different things. Right is in the will of God. All right, let me rush. Number 12, huh? Am I living my life on assumptions? A lot of people are living life on? They assume. They don't know the real will of God. That's why they are opportunists. They take whatever comes. I told you, when you are under 20 years, if I come to you and say, let's go to town, you say, yeah, 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 let's go, let's go. But when you are a certain age, over that, you say, uh, but let me look at my schedule. <laughs> why? Because now you are not here. Assuming everything is right. When you're young, you're assuming everything. So some people continue with that. Even old age, they're assuming as long as they wake up, they say, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes as the spirit leads. Uh -uh. Sometimes it's not as the spirit leads. Sometimes you need to plan. The Bible says commit your plans unto God. Meaning you have to plan. It says plan outside and do the work. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? There are certain things, plan what you want to become. Project in five years what you want to become. It's your place. Time is against me. Number 13. Am I, uh, what can I say? Uh, or am I, deriving, am I deriving benefits from a purpose that does not come from God? There are some people are driving benefits from the purpose that doesn't come from God. 14. Am I living aimlessly and a wandering life? Some people are wandering. They don't know what is it. They have no clue who they are or what they're supposed to do on earth. They are depending on the government to give them an idea at least. If there's no curriculum like that, ah, they, they don't know. They just live life. And this is where failure comes from. Are we together? Where, which number? 15, am I living a life, uh, for instance, maybe spiritual procrastination? Are you living in procrastination? Spiritual procrastination. Every time you, you started planning five years, you have never ever started that project. If it's January, you'll be so zealous after the prayers that this year now, ah, this year I'm going to do it. You write on a paper. Before you can even finish planning, you throw the paper or you just leave it. Before you know, it's... It's June. Some of you already, what you planned January never came to pass. It's June. It's June now. Six months. You have only six months and maybe four months. Then uh, towards in November, say, no, 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 I'll wait for January. <laughs> January comes, you'll be saying, yo, 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 okay, let me wait until companies open. I will start planning, but maybe February. Before you know, again, you're in June. Before you know, it's like 10 years is lost. The devil is creating situations. When you want to start, he attacks you in a way. He pressurizes you in a way. He brings an idea. He makes people fight you. As a result, you keep on postponing. It means you are living in a spiritual procrastination. I told you, I wrote my thesis for masters and doctorate when I was not in university. Because I had free time and I told God, let me write it. So when time came for me to do it, I wrote other exams, but when it came to thesis, I presented the one I wrote when I was not enrolled. And I got 97 percent. 198 for doctorate. Are you getting what I'm saying? I wrote most of my books when I was not doing anything. I said, I'm not going to waste the time. Let me use it to do something. There's something I can do. That later on, when I don't have time, I'm busy preaching, I can just put, I have 10 books that I've already written. I just need to publish them. Now I may not have the time to write, so I can just pull from what I wrote. You need to know how to manage time to defeat procrastination. Are we together? Oh, I've gone way over the time. But let's see. Number? What happened is, is your ladder or 
are you placing a ladder of life against the wrong building or war? A lot of people, they climb. But only when they are on top, they discover they climb the wrong building. Only when they are 60, they realize they never fulfilled God's plan. And they are panicking now. Is it too late? You can still reclaim. But what I'm saying, do it now. Are we together? Sometimes our own issues. That's why to serve God, don't be easily offended. To serve God, don't be easily Devil may place an offense just to take you out before you can be blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even when we put rules, those rules are to guide you so that you can fight properly. So that we can maximize you to push you through the narrow road. Are we getting what I'm saying? A lot of people will throw tantrums and they'll go, oh, I have people now who are phoning me after maybe five years. Why? You have gotten the blessing a long time. I get what I'm saying. Don't be easily offended. Are we together? Number 17. Are you unconsciously standing in your own way of progress uh, and blaming the enemy? You can be the one standing in your way of because of lack of planning. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Or you don't pray warfare. You don't and you're blaming the enemy. Are you spending your life? Are you? Spending your life just for nothing. 19, do you worry or memorize your failures and recite them? That can hinder you from succeeding. So these are some of the questions that uh, I wanted to ask you to check whether you're on the right track or not. So you need to do it honestly. And number 20, like I said, you will die or you will be killed. You will what? Every person will die or? To die is to fulfill your destiny. While to be killed is to end your life before fulfilling your destiny. So your prayer is to say, I refuse to expire before I inspire. I refuse to be killed. People who die, they'll finish. You know like Billy Graham? They'll finish. They'll even have time to see it and all the age. And they'll say, now the Lord wants to take me. They will die. But the killed, before you can finish, they will attack you and kill. So when we're talking about destiny, many people, many children have been killed before their time. I told you of the young man last week in conclusion. That had prayed for a year and he testified, right? And they gave him promotion. But you know what he did? He stopped coming for these meetings. And then the same job I prayed for him, they gave him promotion. But then the people started phoning him who were old in the company to say, I wanted that position. Do you still want to take it? And he says, yes, I want to take it. He says, Okay. He was supposed to start the promotion on a Monday. Friday night, he woke up, blood coming out of his mouth. Be when he was calling people, unfortunately, I will tell the sister to say that when she comes. Before she, they could call the people, believers, everything came out. Witchcraft. They can kill you in your sleep. Can't you like God? There are no rules. The moment you say, yes, I need the job, they went somewhere. That's why you can never be ignorant of these kind of things. You need to know how to fight without rules in the name of Jesus. I say you need to know how to fight without rules in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that those that are after you, God might cripple them in the name of Jesus. I break any power of darkness in the name of Jesus. I curse any power of darkness in the name of Jesus. <laughs>